Over 200,000 tons of toxic gas are transformed into solid sulfur every day, the industrial gold that fuels the entire chemical world. The journey of this element is nothing short of extraordinary. Hot vapor condenses into a stream of glowing red liquid, then crystallizes into solid golden blocks. From volcanic mines in Indonesia to oil refineries in the Middle East, the production of sulfur stands as proof of our ability to turn poison into power. And that's the journey we're about to uncover. From what once seemed like an ordinary substance hidden underground, sulfur has become one of the most influential raw materials in the industrial world. Each year, more than 70 million tons are produced globally, most of it recovered from hydrogen sulfide gas, which is a toxic compound that smells like rotten eggs and is released during oil and natural gas extraction. Once separated and refined, sulfur becomes the foundation for making sulfuric acid the essential chemical behind hundreds of industries, from fertilizers and batteries to pharmaceuticals and metallurgy. But long before it entered factories, this element was tied to faith and warfare. In ancient Egypt, sulfur was used for purification and mummification. In China, it became a key ingredient in the invention of gunpowder. Over thousands of years, humanity has turned the toxic fumes and the sharp volcanic odor of sulfur into a pillar of progress, showing how we've learned to master nature through knowledge. Sulfur is an element that exists in both worlds, the natural and the industrial. Deep underground, geothermal reactions create hydrogen sulfide gas, or H2S. When this gas escapes through volcanic cracks, it meets cool air and oxygen gradually cooling down and leaving behind bright yellow mineral deposits around the vents. Deeper still, sulfur combines with metals to form sulfide ores, such as pyrite and galena, mineral structures that have existed for millions of years and helped shape the ancient geology of our planet. But with the rise of the oil and gas industry, the story of sulfur took a different turn. During the extraction of crude oil and natural gas, the toxic hydrogen sulfide gas is separated from the main flow and sent into what's known as the Claus process, a chemical sequence where it reacts with sulfur dioxide at high temperatures to produce pure liquid sulfur. This glowing red liquid is then cooled, crystallized, and solidified within a closed system, forming bright yellow blocks of sulfur with near-perfect purity. In nature, the creation of sulfur takes thousands of years of geological movement. In the modern world, it happens in just a few hours inside a refinery. What was once tied to volcanoes and poisonous fumes has now become a key resource powering hundreds of industries, from chemicals and pharmaceuticals to energy production. Among the many methods humans have developed to obtain sulfur, the frash process is considered one of the most revolutionary breakthroughs in the chemical industry of the early 20th century. Instead of mining by hand or burning ore, engineer Herman Frasch discovered a way to drill deep into underground layers of pure sulfur, located several hundred feet below the surface. A system of three concentric pipes was installed to pump superheated water at around 330 degrees Fahrenheit into the ground. Under the intense heat, the solid sulfur begins to melt, forming a thick, bright yellow liquid. Then, a stream of high-pressure compressed air is injected to push the molten mixture back up to the surface through the central pipe. As the glowing liquid cools inside large collection tanks, it gradually solidifies into pure sulfur blocks, a product so clean it requires almost no further refining. If the frash process represents the height of modern engineering, then volcanic sulfur mining shows how humans still harness the raw energy of the Earth itself. In places like the crater of Mount Ijen in Indonesia, one of the few remaining natural sulfur mines still active today, the process unfolds amid a landscape that is both majestic and unforgiving. The entire area is blanketed in dense white smoke, where hydrogen sulfide and sulfur dioxide gases constantly escape from the ground at temperatures of more than 400 degrees Fahrenheit. 
When these toxic gases meet cool air and oxygen, they ignite into the famous blue fire, glowing blue flames that can reach up to 15 feet high, visible only in the darkness of night. The scene is surreal and beautiful, yet it also reveals a deadly environment where a single deep breath can burn the lungs or cut off oxygen entirely. Through the thick haze, Indonesian miners, most of them independent laborers, climb into the crater every day carrying bamboo baskets and iron bars. They install ceramic pipes along the crater walls to direct the hot gases outward, allowing the condensation process to happen more evenly. As the gases meet the cooler air, the evaporated sulfur begins to condense, turning into a bubbling red-orange liquid that flows along the natural rock channels. Within minutes, the molten sulfur cools and solidifies into bright yellow crusts, the raw and primitive form of sulfur. The miners then break these crusts apart by hand using metal hammers or crowbars. Each piece weighs about 10 to 20 pounds, and they load basket after basket until the total weight reaches between 150 and 200 pounds. They carry these loads up a slope nearly two miles long, some sections rising at close to 45 degrees, often barefoot or wearing thin rubber sandals. Working in such toxic conditions, most have nothing more than a damp cloth or a simple fabric mask to cover their faces. Yet many continue the work for decades, earning only three to five US dollars a day. A small sum for the immense risk, but the only source of income for their families. At the collection site near the base of the volcano, the cooled sulfur blocks are sorted by size and purity before being sent for refining. The entire Kawa Ijin area produces only about 20 to 30 tons of sulfur per day, more than 400 times less than the amount recovered daily at a single industrial complex in Qatar. And yet, this small-scale operation reveals a striking truth. While Qatar stands for the pinnacle of closed-loop, high-tech safety, Kawa Ijin remains a living portrait of human endurance, a place where people still face the Earth's heat and toxic breath with nothing but strength and willpower. In the oil refining and natural gas industry, sulfur isn't mined directly from rocks. Instead, it's recovered from hydrogen sulfide gas, a toxic byproduct that forms during crude oil processing. Rather than releasing this gas into the atmosphere, refineries make use of it through what's known as the Claus process, a method that's both safe and energy efficient. It begins when part of the hydrogen sulfide is burned inside a reaction chamber, which produces sulfur dioxide gas. These two gases are then mixed and reacted at high temperatures, creating a flow of sulfur vapor and steam. That vapor is cooled inside a condenser, where the sulfur transforms into a bright red liquid that drips down into a collection pit. There, it's purified, cooled, and solidified into dense golden blocks. This method allows more than 95% of the sulfur in the incoming gas to be recovered, turning what would be a toxic waste product into a valuable industrial resource. That's why the Klaus process is often described as the very heart of every modern oil refinery. After it's recovered, raw sulfur still contains plenty of impurities such as mineral dust, volcanic ash, and traces of oil. To reach the required level of purity, it's sent into a controlled melting tank where the temperature is carefully regulated. The process begins as the sulfur is gradually heated to about 260 degrees Fahrenheit, just enough to melt it completely without altering its chemical structure. Once liquefied, the molten sulfur is pumped through a multi-stage filtration system in which layers of metal mesh and porous materials trap the remaining solid particles. In the next stage, the liquid moves into a settling tower that separates out steam and volatile compounds. Any organic residues or trace metals are removed in an adsorption tank, which typically uses activated carbon or refined clay. Thanks to these steps, the color of the sulfur becomes clearer and more uniform. When all impurities have been eliminated, the sulfur reaches a purity level of up to 99.9%. This is the quality required before it moves on to chemical production lines, where the stability and uniformity of the material determine the performance of the final products. After the refining stage is completed, 
The stream of purified molten sulfur is sent directly to the cooling and pelletizing area. Here, a pressure-controlled distribution system divides the flow into fine jets that are sprayed into a cooling tower filled with circulating cool air. Inside this chamber, temperature is carefully regulated so that the sulfur solidifies in mid-air, forming small, round pellets only a few feet in size. Within the tower, cool air is blown upward from the base, creating a countercurrent flow opposite to the falling sulfur. The temperature difference between the two streams causes each droplet to harden gradually while still suspended in the air, producing uniform spherical pellets measuring just a few inches in diameter. At the bottom of the tower, the hardened pellets are collected on a forced air cooling conveyor, where evenly distributed airflow lowers their temperature to around 120 degrees Fahrenheit. This stage ensures the pellets dry quickly, remain free-flowing, and avoid clumping during storage. The cooled material is then transferred to a multi-deck vibrating screen, which classifies the pellets by standard industrial sizes. Any undersized or deformed particles are recovered, remelted, and fed back into the melting tank to maximize material efficiency. The final product is fine, uniform sulfur pellets with a dry surface and a natural golden yellow color. This granular form is preferred in industrial applications because it's easy to package, produces less dust, and melts more evenly during the production of sulfuric acid, fertilizers, and other chemical products. The purified sulfur pellets are transferred directly to a sealed storage facility located next to the export terminal. The entire area is maintained under dry, cool, and dust-free conditions. A network of sensors continuously monitors humidity to ensure the material retains its bright golden color before loading. From there, the pellets move along a low-pressure enclosed conveyor system that carries them straight to the ship loading station. At the dock, automated loading equipment controls both the flow rate and the total weight of sulfur as it's discharged into the ship's cargo holds. Each hold is divided into smaller compartments lined with moisture-resistant coatings and equipped with pressure regulated ventilation fans to maintain stable temperatures throughout the voyage. Once the vessel is fully loaded, the hatch openings are sealed with the composite covers, preventing seawater vapor from entering and minimizing friction between the sulfur layers during transport. During the journey, onboard control rooms continuously track temperature and humidity to prevent the sulfur from caking or degrading. Specialized shipping routes connecting the Middle East, Southeast Asia, in North America form a massive global transport network. Each vessel leaving the port carries tens of thousands of tons of sulfur, a quiet commodity that nonetheless serves as the foundation for countless industries around the world. After it's refined, sulfur becomes one of the quiet materials that keep modern industry running. Its most visible use is in agriculture, where sulfur is turned into sulfate fertilizers that enrich the soil and help crops absorb nutrients more effectively. But the influence of sulfur goes far beyond the fields. In industry, most of the world's sulfur supply is used to produce sulfuric acid, a chemical so essential that its production volume is often seen as a measure of a nation's industrial strength. From oil refining and metal processing, to the manufacturing of paper, dyes, and pharmaceuticals. Wherever there's a factory, there's a trace of sulfuric acid. What few people realize is that this very acid also lives inside car batteries. Inside every battery, sulfuric acid acts as the electrolyte that allows electricity to flow, charge, and discharge over and over to start the engine. But have you ever wondered how that acid is actually filled into the battery? and how the entire process is kept perfectly safe down to the smallest detail. Before reaching the core, the purified sulfuric acid solution is diluted to the precise density and cooled to a safe temperature. Each empty battery casing is positioned accurately beneath an array of automated filling nozzles. The system operates with an error margin of less than one thousandth, ensuring that every cell receives exactly the amount of acid designed for its capacity. When the valves open, streams of sulfuric acid flow into the battery chambers at a carefully controlled rate. Only when each cell reaches its ideal volume limit do the valves automatically shut off, 
guaranteeing no overflow, no shortage, and no trapped air bubbles. Immediately after filling, the batteries are placed on a vibrating conveyor, allowing the electrolyte to spread evenly around the lead plates and expel any remaining air pockets. This ensures a perfectly balanced chemical reaction inside each cell, forming the stable foundation of the battery's power. Sulfur begins its journey in some of the harshest environments on Earth, yet over time it has become a foundation for countless aspects of modern life. This element is found in fuels, materials, fertilizers, medicines, and many everyday products that surround us. Every block of sulfur that's mined, refined, and reborn through the industrial cycle reflects how humanity transforms raw resources into the driving force of progress. The story of sulfur is more than a tale of chemistry. It's a testament to how technology adapts and how the idea of reuse has become central to sustainable production. From massive oil refineries to active volcanic mines, every process is connected within a global network of manufacturing where sulfur remains a silent, indispensable link. What do you think has allowed a substance once seen as toxic to become the backbone of modern industry? Share your thoughts below, leave a like if you enjoyed this journey, and subscribe to the channel to explore more fascinating stories of how the world is made.